The Ranger is back. What's going on everyone? Today we have the 2019 Ford Ranger. This is the XL, which is a lower trim, but it's got some options. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you get for a $35,000 Ford Ranger. And since this thing has been gone, the Toyota Tacoma has become the top selling midsize truck. And we're gonna find out if this is worthy of the crown. Let's get started. What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in for this 2019 Ford Ranger review. The Ranger comes with the XL, XLT, and Lariat trims. We have the base model L or XL, and it would originally be $30,600 as it came, but we've got options that move it up to $35,000, which include the STX appearance package that I'll go through and Equipment Group 101A. Let's go ahead and start on the front. The Ranger gives us halogen headlights, halogen daytime running lights, halogen fog lights thanks to the STX package and then you can see the STX also gives us these carbon black bumpers and Ford wants us to know that those are real steel bumpers. Um, got our intercooler down there, a couple recovery hooks down there as well. Black grill for this one, you can get chrome surrounds on some others but it does say Ranger on the front as well. This color is blue lightning. I want to know what y'all think of it. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty sharp, it's got a metallic-y look to it as well. I think it fits the Ranger pretty well. Still, I think the Ranger looks pretty good for this generation. Uh, I think it's maybe a little bit soft up front, but overall, I like the looks of it, and I'd like to know what you guys think as well. Typically, you'll have steel 16-inch wheels, but we've got the STX wheels, which are the 17-inch silver wheels, and 255 series tires on there. They're all-terrain tires, and we've got disc brakes as well, which is a plus. The Tacoma has drum brakes in the back, but we do not. One thing I thought was interesting was the mirrors on the base base model without our equipment group package. These will be manual glass mirrors, so you can't even adjust the mirrors. Uh, you can get power folding on other trims, but ours are manual folding. Uh, our glass is power though, thanks to our equipment group package here. One thing with the cab models is we've got the Super Crew right here, as you can see, which is the biggest one. Super Cab is available but there's no regular cab option. It does come on a fully box frame. Ford did not go soft with that at all. It definitely feels like a fully box frame when you drive it, but it drives well for a truck. If you're wondering about the length compared to the F-150, this Ranger is 211 inches no matter what you get, the same wheelbase no matter what cab or bed length. And the F-150 uh, similarly equipped would be 232 inches. So uh, definitely a big difference with that. This is not a small truck by any means though, so don't think that at all. As we move to the back, we have an optional $420 electronic rear locker, 8.9 inches of ground clearance, plus the STX box decal back there. In addition to that, we've got our trailer tow package for an extra $500. The tail lamps on the back of the Ranger are pretty large for the size of this truck if you ask me, but I like the Ranger embossing on the back as well. Then you got your typical EcoBoost badge right there, but pretty, pretty plain overall with this model, but we've got a locking tailgate. Some of the things you're missing that are available on higher trims are LED head and tail lamps, a chrome grill surround, 18 inch wheels, power folding mirrors with approach lamps, body color door handles, and LED cargo lamps. For driver assist features, our Ranger comes with Ford Copilot 360, which is a $735 option. That'll give you automatic high beams, blind spot with cross traffic alert, the lane keeping system, driver alert system, front and rear parking sonars, and then standard on all Rangers is automatic emergency braking. Now moving to the truck bed of the Ranger. We've got a locking tailgate, which is cool. That's standard feature. You can lock it and unlock it with this, uh, with the remote. Got our backup camera down here. There's actual, uh, you know, bumper that you can actually use as a step, which is good. This does not softly open or easy lift. We've got the optional $500 spray in bed liner from the factory. It seems to be pretty rugged and durable. Between the wheel wells, there's 45 inches, not quite enough for some four by eight sheets, but you could tilt them and make it work. There's also six standard fixed tie downs back here to make this bed pretty darn usable. And overall, this five foot bed is pretty short. You can get a six foot bed, but only on the super cab model. And the best part about this bed is that when properly equipped, you can have a payload of over 1800 pounds, which is class leading. Hopping into the front seats of the Ranger, we've got these black cloth seats, but the good news is that you can adjust the height and you still have lumbar support, even though you have these cloth seats, which is more than the Tacoma can say, because you can't even move them up and down. There's no tilt adjustment on here. You'd have to move up in trims in order to get that with leather heated seats. 
but these seats seem to be pretty darn comfortable. I mean, they're soft. They've got decent bolstering in them. Um, I've got no problems with the shaping of them. I can find a good driving position. And then the steering wheel here, it is polyurethane. It's not leather wrapped on our trim, but it's tilt and telescoping, and it's got a decent range of motion as well. And the good news is the passenger seat can also move up and down. Taking a look at the inside of the Ranger, we've got a soft armrest. This is hard touch up here, but we've got some softness there. A bottle holder that's pretty good size for my bottle, another bottle holder next to it, and a storage bin. Nice solid door slam. This truck feels and sounds very solid with one exception that I'll talk about. Right over here, we've got our lighting controls, truck bed light, fog lights, you can circulate through that, or uh, your interior lighting as well. And then we have a polyurethane steering wheel. Uh, it'd be nice to see a leather wrap steering wheel, but this should be pretty darn durable. We've got controls on each side, cruise control, controls for our display up above, radio controls as well. Definitely pretty easy to use, pretty straightforward. To start the Ranger, we've got a regular key fob. This is not the smart key system or the my key, uh, but you can get that on other trims. Pop out key, pretty basic, just like you've seen in some other Ford models. And then I'm gonna scroll through some of these, uh, some of the screen right here. You got regular gauges on the side, and then you've got a trip computer in the middle. And that is pretty accurate to what I've been getting. I was getting about 21 actually before I started filming and idling and stuff. So very impressed with that. It's kind of a mini version of what you get in the F-150 and some more information that you can scroll through on there. Now moving across the rest of the interior, I wanna know what you guys think. It's pretty basic, pretty simple. It does say Ranger over there, which is kind of cool. I like how they included this uh, storage bin up here, but it's just plasticky. Maybe a little grippy mat would be nice. This is hard touch as well. And my biggest complaint, I don't really care if it's hard touch or not. I just don't want it to rattle. And this rattles right there. That's pretty much the sound that it makes. It's really annoying. It's where the two pieces come together. If I hold it, it doesn't rattle, but dang, that gets annoying. And I wish that there was something a little bit easier to take care of that. Our screen right here is very small, very basic, but you can get a bigger screen, of course, an eight inch screen in other models. Regular buttons, you've still got Bluetooth and uh, our equipment group gives us a six speaker system instead of a four speaker system, but very simple and easy to use. Big knobs and buttons as well. And they've got a nice rubbery coating to them, which feels good. So I like to see that. Same goes with our manual climate control. Of course, dual zones available on other trims, but not here. Again, very easy to use. You just press what you want, where you want. A couple 12 volt power outlets for more plug-ins. And then one complaint is the little storage bin back there. Um, I don't, it's not the bin itself. It's that this little USB plug-in is right in the middle of where everything goes. But other than that, it's not too bad. Then we've got our auto stop start button, automatic or uh, electronic locking rear, uh, trailering button, parking sonar and traction control. And I like how you can actually manually shift your gears if you need to, you know, engine brake or something like that regular shifter. You can even move it into S mode, sport mode. An actual handbrake right here. Bottle holder is good size and accommodating. This armrest is fairly soft and a decent width, not too bad. We have a moving tray here, but there's nothing else inside of it. USBs are in the back behind us, I'll show you. Locking glove box over here. I'm glad that it's locking. Some people disagree with me, but I think a locking glove box should be standard on every trim. And then it says Ranger up there. No automatic dimming mirror in our trim. We've got the regular flip mirror. And I don't think the base base actually gives you um, an option to do that. I think it's just with our equipment group. And then, interestingly enough, our visors don't even have mirrors right here. The entire visor can slide. So that was a little interesting to me. There's no sunroof in here as well, something to consider. And then just your basic lights up here. So that works pretty well. Otherwise you can hit the button, you know, basic, basic, no sunglass holder, nothing like that. But there is a grab handle. And then as we look back, visibility is actually not too bad. That rear window is pretty good size. You can fold the headrest down. So overall, uh, basic interior for this trim, which is what a lot of people are gonna want and like, something pretty durable. 
no maintenance, anything like that. Available on other trims missing in here, you can get some of the features will be ambient lighting, dual zone AC, leather shifter and steering wheel, automatic dimming rear view mirror, heated eight way power leather seats, an eight inch sync three system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, smart, two smart charging USBs, Sirius XM, plus a seven speaker B&O sound system, push button start with the easy access, intelligent access, garage door openers, and then your trail control, which is like crawl control for off-roading, or cruise control for off-roading, and then a terrain, terrain management system to scroll through different terrains if you're off-roading as well. Let's go ahead and hop in the back seat here. Real quick on the door, we've got hard surfaces up top, soft armrest, good grab handle, bottle holder down there. The seats have some decent space to them. I'll show you that in a little bit, at least for a mid-sized truck, but we can fold these seats up. There's a little strap down here. You can lift that, then it will stay in place. It could go up a little further if you ask me, but that unveils some under seat storage area, which is really nice, especially that bin over there. That is pretty large. Then you can see a couple USB ports, a 110 volt power outlet. So it's a real house plug, which is nice, and a little storage bin right there. We've just got these vinyl floor mats right here in our trim. Uh, now, when I get this thing out of the way, these headrests can fold down. And then I believe the only way to fold this down is way over there. And then that can fold down as well. There's not hardly any space behind the seat, but there is a jack over there. Little bits of room maybe for some small stuff, but I wish that this would lay down a little bit more flat, but at least you have that versatility. But my biggest complaint is that this is not a split folding seat. So if someone was going to sit there, they would have to, you can't have the seat up at all. So that's one complaint. But now that I'm in here at five foot nine sitting behind myself, I've got some decent foot space and some decent knee space, at least enough to be comfortable. I'm definitely happy with this. There is a floor hump in the middle, so you would have trouble fitting an adult right there. And with that seat a little further back, there's still a little bit of knee room as well. My headroom sitting up tall even with my hat my head is not touching and that's definitely welcome in a cab like this so plenty of headroom overall and then right next to me we've got this folding armrest with a couple small cup holders as well under the hood of the new 2019 ford ranger there's only one powertrain option at least as of right now and we get this 2.3 liter ecoboost engine it's a four cylinder turbo so there's no v6 there's no diesel this is our only option as of right now it's a pretty powerful engine though. It will put out 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, and it's paired with a 10 speed automatic transmission. There's no manual transmission available as of right now and auto start stop technology is standard across the board. But the good news is it can be temporarily turned off inside the cab. Now, in terms of miles per gallon, this is definitely an efficient truck. And for the midsize class, from what I've driven, it's been the most efficient in my time with it. Miles per gallon will rate uh, with the two-wheel drive model, 21 in the city, 26 on the highway, and our four-wheel drive model with an electronic shift on the fly four-wheel drive system will be 20 in the city, 24 on the highway. Max towing for the Ranger when properly equipped right here will get 7,500 pounds and 1,560 pounds for payload, but the max payload is 1,860 pounds, which is the top. As far as the towing goes, only the diesel GM trucks can tow more, 200 pounds more. Otherwise, for gas engines, this is the leader for the midsize segment. And trailer sway control is standard, but there's no trailer brake control. All right, everyone, we are on the test drive for the Ford Ranger, and I'm on gravel right now. And my first impression is that this definitely feels like a truck. It feels solid, which is good. I always appreciate that with this fully boxed frame. Now that we get rolling, we're about to hit some, some railroad tracks. And it dampens big stuff really well. Of course, it's going to feel, you know, a little bit uh, bumpier and more jittery thanks to it being a, a real truck and real frame. But that's a good thing. That's what makes it so capable. The power of this EcoBoost engine is very good. So just scrolling about 30, 35, put my foot down. And the boost is real. I mean, the thing pulls pretty hard. I, I'm definitely pleased with that. I The transmission performance of this has far outdone that six speed in the Tacoma that I was recently and I was griping about that and I've heard of problems with it and this 10 speed has done really well but there's no manual option put my foot down again and you can hear that noise coming in a little bit it doesn't sound very good uh, in fact let me put it in s mode so rpms are about one and a half gonna shift it down 
and now it's just over two so s mode definitely and it's holding rpms definitely quicker to downshift it's kind of a legitimate uh sport mode so that's kind of cool if you want to have some fun with it i haven't personally really had it in that at all um on this road i can hear a little bit of wind noise when it comes to like noise vibration and harshness wind noise is there a little bit but this is pretty quiet i'm actually going to put this in my five likes and dislikes that it's a quiet ride especially on a rougher road where you'd expect road noise to be coming through it's not too bad overall like i said ride comfort is pretty good for what it is for being a truck uh, you can hit some big stuff and it dampens it really well but you do get some shake in here, you know, a little bit of jitter, but for what it is, it performs pretty well, especially for this class. Handling for this truck, it's it's nimble enough. The steering has, you know, it's it's kind of light. It, it's maybe a little bit nimble. It's not sporty by any means. There's not a ton of feedback, but for being a truck, this thing drives really well. It's really easy to park. It's much easier to park than the F-150. I thought that that kind of had a, a heavier steering at low speeds, which made it a little difficult to maneuver. You had to, you know, really kind of crank on the wheel. But this Ranger, it's comfortable to drive. It handles good enough. The braking, find out right here. Gonna hit the brakes pretty hard. The brakes are a little soft. They do a good job of getting you stopped, but you have to push a little bit more than I would like to get it to stop, but it still works pretty well. So what do I think about this Ranger? And do I think it can take this top spot from the Tacoma? No, I don't think it can. I think it's really good and it's a very well-rounded truck. It's probably the most capable out of all the mid-sized trucks in terms of towing and, and payload. But I just think that the Tacoma has entrenched itself enough as the number one spot generally good reliability there's been some hiccups the past couple of years and i think with a recent or a soon refresh uh, an upcoming refresh i think the tacoma is going to stay on top i really like the seating position in here better than the tacoma i like the back seat space in here better than the tacoma uh, driving the two i can't you know i'd have to drive them back to back to really get a good feel of that but you can't get a manual here like you can with the tacoma so I've talked about the Tacoma a little bit because I think that it's important to know that that's what this is gonna try to beat in sales. Now I wanna know what you think. Do you think that this is gonna surpass the Tacoma? You can get a lot of features in here if you get up to the Lariat trim, but it gets pretty darn expensive too. This being the XL base with some additional options is still $35,000. That's pretty expensive for a truck that doesn't have you know, power seats, leather seats, heated seats, uh, a touch screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but it does have some of the safety tech like lane keep assist, which it's actually worked pretty well to keep me in my lane, which is nice. I appreciate that. Automatic high beams are handy as well, but the base, base, base with no options is really bare bones. So something to think about, but that's going to be the conclusion of this video. I want to know what you guys think down below. Please consider subscribing for more reviews like this short five like reviews and quick reviews on everyman driver channel so thank you all so much for watching hope you guys have a fantastic day and we'll catch you next time